Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Now this last couple of days I've been pulling potatoes up. These are the empty ones. Some of these were already empty and that's just where I'm storing them until next year. Um, I had four or five pots of Aaron Pilot at the start of the year, then a uh, dozen 15 of Charlotte's, which they're all up now. But yesterday and this morning, I've pulled up all my King Edwards. Now they're all gonna get stored there. They're all on plastic to stop the weeds underneath growing. And they'll get covered with some weed membrane at the end of the year. This compost was fresh this year, bought in, and there was a mix of sort of homegrown compost, a little bit of manure in there, some green waste compost that I bought in bulk and a few uh, bags of compost from the garden centre. So it was a good mix of, of stuff. They were all mulched. So that's what you can see on the top there is, is a straw mulch. That's now all mixed in and I will incorporate some grass clippings into there as well um, later on through this season. Then they'll all stand and this compost will be used now for a good five years. So it's got four more seasons work to do before I change it. Because now all the goodness has gone out of it mostly. It's just a medium, it's a growing medium now. So I need to perk it up next year and I'll do that with either some per potato fertilizer or some blood fish and bone, most likely blood fish and bone. Uh, that's what I normally use. But I've got a few more to go at. I'll just reset up the camera and show you where I'm up to in these beds now. <laughs> so this is where I'm up to now. This is my King Edward harvest. And I grow this chiefly for um, either triple cooked chips, which we quite like, or roast potatoes. Mostly it's for roast potatoes through the winter. It's the King of Spuds as far as I'm concerned for roast potatoes. Coming a close second is this line of potatoes I've got here, there's about 10 buckets. And these are a new variety to me, uh, and I've only grown them for about oh, four or five years. It's, and it's an American variety called Kennebec. So I know there's quite a few American viewers on the channel, you'll know this variety. And I love its nutty taste. And again, it's good for um, things like roasting, um, chipping, and it's incredibly good as a baked potato as well, if they're any of a decent size in there. Um, I have had some really good crops in the past with stonking sized potatoes, but this year, potato size itself seems to be down and yield out of pots is down for me. I did harvest two days ago, um, my pink fir apples, and it's a derisory crop I got out of them, probably three or four pound of harvested potatoes from about five pots and that's just ridiculous so i'm hoping that those kennebecs are a lot better over here i mean i've taken all the foliage off this now because there was signs of what was looking to be the starter blight so i'll take those up in the next day or two and over here are the blight resistant sarpo mira and i'm just going to leave them there now for as long as i possibly can um, I'm just going to keep my eye on them and if there's any problems I'll remove all the foliage even though they're blight resistant not blight proof so you've still got to keep your eye on them they should be all right they have been in previous years to me and I'll let them grow on as long as possible and just leave them there and I'll harvest them later in the year so there we go that's the potatoes sorted mostly <laughs> let's move on to something else <laughs> Now, I'm going to want to pick some lettuce today and you can see this bed of lettuce, it's, it's bolted and it's been the problem all year this year. Of these sorts of leafy plants have just been going crazy and bolting. I've had so much go to seed, it's been ridiculous. So it's been a little bit of a struggle to catch up, uh, to be honest. And one or two plants in here, there's, there's a little line of plants in there I actually had to buy because I thought, my other plants aren't going to come in time, but there you go, That's these are the things you do. Now, this one is obviously far gone to see if there's flower buds on there, so this one is hopeless. But there's a bit of an urban myth out there about lettuce going bitter when they go to seed. Now, I call this going to seed here. This is definitely gone to seed. This has got, let's say, the flower buds on it and will be closely be followed by the seeds. But these are, are okay. Now, where people tell you something, find out for yourself. Go and, you know, I've been around and tasted a good half of these of the smaller ones this morning, and none of them are yet bitter. I found by the time I get up to about this size or over, or this size, or even 
this leggy bugger here, then they're starting to turn bitter. And then you've got to think of their use. How are you going to use the lettuce at the end of the day? Are you going to mix it with things like uh, cucumber and tomato? Are you going to mix it up in the bowl whereby the juices of those fruits will cover those leaves and mask that flavour? Still good lettuce to use. Um, also, you've got to think, are you going to use vinaigrettes? I mean, one of my fam favourite ones at the minute is Dijon mustard, a pomegranate molasses, which is quite sweet, and a balsamic vinegar. Now, all, together, all three of those make a very powerful vinaigrette, especially as I'm a little bit heavy-handed with the mustard, but that's a different story. So any bitterness that's in there will probably be in, masked by the, the, the glaze that I'm putting on there, so I'm not going to taste it. So anyway, I have got other plants in, which is what I planted the other day. I've got some lettuce over there which are growing, and I've got some rocket, which I'll show you in a minute in the small tunnel. But in the meantime, I'm going to pick today, I've got a bucket of water here and what I do is I just, for the sake of all, I'm going to just show you, just take a leaf off and throw it in the bucket of water. By the time I get it home, it's still in prime condition. I wash it, salad spin it and store it in, a, in an airtight box in the fridge and that will last a week, really will. And that tip I got last year off, um, off Steve's Seaside Allotment, if you're going to have a look at his channel, I'll put a link in the description. Go and have a look at his channel because that's the tip I got off him and it's perfect. You can take, take leaves off, put them in a bag or in a truck or something, take them home. And by the time you've got it home, it's all wilted and, and rubbish and no good, no good. So that's perfect. That means it's like picking it fresh and putting it straight onto a plate by putting it into that water. So I'll go through, I'm going to pick a big bucket full and say it'll last us a week and then we can go at the other plants, which I'll go and show you now. So just quickly while we're here, this is a reminder, this is what I planted the other day. So I've got these lettuces coming on, these should um, give them a couple of days and then they'll start growing away quite happily and they'll last us a good month, six weeks. But anyway, off into the little tunnel, I'll show you the, the rest. Now salad doesn't necessarily have to be just salad leaves. I've got some rocket here, which is a great salad on its own. I've also got some spinach here, and even this now, is you can see, even the spinach is running to seed now. So we'll get a good crop off that uh, this next week. I'll, I'll hack these down a bit and hopefully they'll regrow, but I will be sowing again. So these will fill the gap roughly while the, the new salads are planted the other day, the new lettuces I just showed you get going and start producing for us. Now it can also be quite tricky to get plants going at this time of the year uh, because we've got hot, cool weather, hot weather, cool weather, rainy weather. We don't know in, in August what's really going to happen here in the UK. But anyway, I've sown some salads here and I think I've got a, a red Grenoble, Rouge de Eva, um, yeah, I've even got some coriander herb in there and yeah some um oh what's it called chicory um so they're going to be potted on and they will follow on from the salad plants that i planted two days ago and i just showed you out there on the bed so there's the continuation i'm using the one crop i'm going to use the next crop which is in the small tunnel then i'll use the crop out in the bed and by then time that's gone this will be the next crop to use and i will be sowing more seeds for salads for over the winter so that just keeps things going the coriander is also to go in uh, salads as well coriander uh, mint if you've got it is, is a good one for salads um, and flat leaf parsley as well is really really good but don't chop them up just put a whole leaf in and then you've got flavor pockets and flavor bombs within your salad that changes from fork to fork you I mean you might get a bit of lettuce and a coriander leaf in one fork full, and then a bit of lettuce and a parsley leaf in the next and it just changes and it ups the game with your actual cooking in that respect so there we go a little another little tip for you and these are just sat in a water bath here just to keep them watered during these sort of warmer weather times because it's really really quite hot today anyway moving on now in the seed sowing area, I've got all kinds of sort of um, Asian mustards and there's Chinese cabbage there and pak choy, 
um, there's there's all kinds of stuff but while that stuff is small and I'm not particularly using that and I've covered the reasons why in another video you'll have to look back on I can use some of those to bulk out the salads that are just down there the spinach and the rocket so I can add flavor taste texture color all from these extra crops here that I'm not actually using so it doesn't get wasted per se it just bulks things out and keeps things moving so if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe big red button down here it doesn't bite it won't hurt you it's free to, to subscribe and it just lets you know when i post the next video and as you're seeing me growing these crops you'll see them growing on over the weeks through the winter and how i deal with different things with different problems or how i harvest or how things actually work so it's a good idea if you subscribe say doesn't hurt you and just lets me know that i'm doing something right and if you hit the bell next to it that's your notification bell and if you select all in that category then every time i post a video you'll be told about it so you'll get to see it straight away but that's it for today hope you've uh, enjoyed today's video i certainly enjoyed making it and i've enjoyed getting them spuds up as well because it's always a, a good time of the year so there we go look after yourselves everyone Take care, stay safe. I'll see you very, very soon. Tirano.